Okay, this question is uh, one from uh, a problem that was uh, sent to me by a student to ask for some uh, explanation or some help on this one. And you'll notice that, and let me just jot down the, the problem. This is uh, in the prerequisites chapter, section one, and it's one of those uh, absolute value type questions. And I'm, I'm simply jotting down over on my pad, I'm just jotting down the just jotting down the problem so that uh, you know we can do it together on the pad. Now, so let me uh, let me let's look at the pad for a second here. We'll do this one pretty easily. Uh, notice that in these kind of problems, you have to remember this idea here. And the idea is that if you have something inside the absolute value bars, or and so these are the two vertical absolute value bars. If the result, what do you mean the result? If this involves some calculation or some other activity, the result is a positive value, then it is a positive value if X is the result of calculation is greater than or equal to zero. Oh, wait a minute. If the result of the activity, when you do the calculation, is less than zero, then you just put a minus in front of X when you remove the absolute bars. So now this is a lot easier to see if, if we just limit ourselves to, to simple numerical problems. For example, if I let X equal minus five here, and I want to uh, remove the absolute value bars and rewrite this, then I would simply say, oh, well look, the value that's inside the absolute value bars is what? It's less than zero. Minus five is less than zero. So then what do I do? Then I take the value that's in here and minus minus becomes a basically a plus five or an unsigned value. If on the other hand, I had this problem, if I had plus five, I would say, oh, this value is greater than zero. And so therefore, when I remove the absolute value bars, I just get a plus five. Now, generally, we, when we take these absolute value bars off, we do not worry about is it a signed value because the reason we're trying to deal with this in terms of absolute value is we're trying to deal with it as a, as a magnitude amount. Now, so let's do this problem. What we need to do is we first of all need to do these calculations. We need to do these calculations. And the question is how much or what is the value of the square root of 10? And so the square root of 10 is a uh, rational number, an irrational number, and so it's not a perfect square number. And so let's just use our calculator. We can come up with an approximation for this. And so we'll say, okay, second square root 10, and I get this value here. So the square root of 10, and we, let's, we can decide how many decimal places we want to use. Um, they don't really specified I don't think so I'm just going to say 3.162 is probably good enough so 3.162 minus 7 all right so let's do that calculation 3.162 minus 7 is a negative so when I do this calculation the result of this calculation is a negative result here. It's a negative result. And that's what we were trying to find. We were trying to find is the result of this calculation a positive value or a negative value. Now, they don't want me to then simply say, oh, this looks like the ant I removed the absolute value bar is this, 3.838. No, that's not what Math Excel wants. What it wanted me to do is it wanted me to treat this as if this were x value this is the x value i conclude that when you do these calculations the result the result of this calculation you know find the square root of two take away seven is a value that is less than zero i mean there it is right there it's a negative value it's less than zero so therefore to remove the absolute value bar what i do is i simply take the square root of 10 absolute value and just put some parentheses in it and stick a minus in front of the whole thing. Remember this, that's what it said, take and put a minus in front of this value if it's negative and this one is negative. And so then we get what? We get 
minus the square root of 10 minus a minus 7 is plus 7. All righty. And so math Excel should take either minus square root of 10 plus 7 or 7 minus the square root of 10. I don't, I don't think that it's going to matter which sequence we put this answer in. So let's go back right in and see if, uh, see if that works for us. Um, okay. And so we're going to go back over here and what do we say we could do? Uh, let's just go 7 minus the square root of 10. Let's just go 7 minus the square root of 10. Okay, you with me? So let's just go 7, positive 7, minus square root of 10. And um, do a little final check here. Hey, we did a good job on that one. All right, I hope that was, I hope that this video helps you. And uh, I'm going to. Stop the video right now.